Hello, Grace Church. What you just watched was the final act of the former Archbishop of York, Dr. John Sintamu, laying down his crozier at the altar at York Minster Cathedral. The focus of today's episode is objects we rarely see at Grace. We'll talk about vestments and objects used by the bishop during his annual visit, one being the crozier, the other being the mitre. We'll also talk about the cope, which is not only worn by bishops, but it's still quite rare at Grace. The modern mitre is made up of two similar parts, a front and back panel, rising to a peak and sewn together at the sides. Here we see Bishop Nicely wearing his mitre during a visitation to Grace. Two short lappets always hang down from the back. These lappets are probably a vestige of the ancient Greek headband called the mitra, from which we get the word mitre. Mitra was a band of cloth tied around the head, the ends of the remaining fabric of which would fall down the back of the neck. The mitre as we know it seems to have evolved from the kamelaukum, or the Greek kamelaukion. This was originally a headdress worn by officials of the, of the imperial Byzantine court. Here we see a more direct descendant of the kamelaukum, now known as the kamaro, being worn by Pope Benedict XVI. Mitres as we know them today, seem to have originated in papal realm. Among the earliest mentions of a mitre comes from an 8th century text called the Donation of Constantine. This text was a forged Roman imperial decree. It claimed to be Constantine's decree that the Pope in Rome should take over imperial authority in the western part of the Roman Empire. There's a section in the, in the donation in which Constantine supposedly wants a Pope, Sylvester so I, who is Pope from 314 to 335, to wear a bejeweled crown of gold. But Sylvester refused to wear this crown of gold over his clerical crown, the tonsure, and so the emperor gave him a mitre in shining white as a symbol of Christ's resurrection. So from the forged donation of Constantine, we get the sense that the mitre could symbolize a kind of humble, measured authority. But there were other spiritual meanings applied to this headgear. To help us understand this meaning, I want to turn briefly to a clip from the 1964 film Beckett. In this scene, the 12th century cleric Thomas Beckett receives a mitre as the newly minted Archbishop of Canterbury. Lord, on the head of this bishop and champion of thine, I put the helmet of defense and salvation. That with forehead thus adorned, Head armed with the horns of both testaments, he may appear fearsome to the enemies of truth. The prayer which accompanies the placement of the mitre on Thomas Beckett's head for the first time refers to it as the helmet of protection and salvation. It refers to the front and back panels of the mitre as two horns, which represent the horns of the Old and New Testaments, a terror to the enemies of truth, and also the horns of divine brightness and truth. So the mitre represents the teaching responsibility and teaching authority of the bishop, Versions of this prayer are still used in Catholic and some Anglican churches to inaugurate a new bishop. Turning now to the bishop's crozier, also called the bishop's crook. Here we see Bishop Nicely carrying his crozier, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. In Western Christianity, the usual form of a crozier has been a shepherd's crook. The presiding bishop carries something a bit different. A pastoral staff rather than the crozier. Here's our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and the former presiding bishop, Catherine Jeffords Shuri. Beyond the obvious symbolism of the Good Shepherd or of the Rod of Moses, the crozier is a symbol of jurisdiction. Bishops can wear their mitre anywhere, but they generally only carry the crozier within their own diocese. There are some additional spiritual and pastoral meanings applied to the crozier. 
We see these here in the inauguration of Reverend Lily Lane, the eighth bishop of Stockport in the United Kingdom, the first female bishop of the Church of England. And remain with you always. Amen. Encourage the faithful, restore the lost. So in addition to the bishop's territorial jurisdiction, crozier has come to symbolize the bishop's pastoral duties, encourage the faithful, restore the lost, and build up the body of Christ. Turning finally to the cope, this is a long mantle which is open at the front and held together in the front by a clasp. It's not just a garment worn by a bishop, although here we see bishop nicely wearing his cope, it actually can be worn by any member of the clergy. It is usually only worn by clergy during processions, during Eucharistic and non-Eucharistic services. It's thought that the cope might have similar origins to the chasuble. The only noticeable modification which the cope has undergone lies in the disappearance of the hood. Some early examples feature a triangular hood, but over time the hood became merely ornamental, and is often represented by a sort of shield of embroidery, sometimes adorned with fringe or tassel. We don't often see these used that grace, so here are some copes in our collection. A similar garment used at Grace is a funeral cloak, which was worn during graveside services. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I look forward to seeing you for our final episode next week.